attributes are dynamic and interactive chart in Excel. Whenever I change here any values in my drop down list, as you guys can see, the chart is automatically updated for me. So I can choose here any values that goes through this list that I have here, this option list, and the chart is going to be automatically updated for me. We basically need to have first a data set to create our chart, and then we're going to use the developer tab and the index function. So we have here three benefits to use this chart right here over the data set. The first one is easy to analyze the data, the results, and to find solutions solutions to your data that you have through the chart instead of using let's say the data set itself because here I have a bunch of values a bunch of rows columns it's a little hard to compare each one of the informations that I have here so let's say I'm gonna ask you this question what is the store store one two three four or five that just sold the most or which one of the store just sold the most in the March month for example yes I know that a data set is important to analyze the data but maybe the chart is a good way to go and it's much easier to analyze and to find the result that I want to look for. So this is the first benefit to use the chart over the data set. The second one, this chart is pretty much easy to use. So it's intuitive, let's say that way. Even if you, you are doing a presentation or a person who doesn't know how to use Excel is using your spreadsheet, you're gonna realize if you just click here in this down arrow, click, and then he can select here an option in the list. It's easy to use and it's easy to realize how to use it. This is the second benefit. And the third one, it's easy to do. So to build this chart here is pretty much easy. So let's find out now how can you do it step by step. The first thing that you need to have to build this chart is a data set. And from your data set, you can build this chart in Excel. And of course, you don't need to have the same data set as I'm having here, okay? You can have your own data set and build this chart from your own personal data set. But in this example right here, I have the quantity sold per month and per store. So I'm basically here compare each one of the stores that I have through each one of the months, January, February, March, so on, so on. Okay, this is the first step. Now, I need to go here to the developer tab. And if you don't have this developer tab into your Excel, do not freak out because you can click here in the home tab and in any blank spot, you can right click and then you can go to customize the ribbon. It's gonna pop out for you this new window and you can select here popular commands and instead of using this, you can select, let's say all tabs, for example. And here we have the developer tab. You can click here, clicking add, and then click OK. Now you get here the developer tab. You can click here and we're gonna use this option right here, insert, and then the second option, combo box. I can click here and I can size this combo box or this drop down list. Okay, and if I click here in this drop down list, it's blank because I still need to fill it in here with information that I'm gonna use. So let's try something here. Let me just right click here and format control and I'm gonna select the option input range. I'm gonna click in this upper arrow and I'm gonna select the range that I'm gonna fill it in with. That is store one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, here we got. And then down arrow again. Okay, let's see if it works. Let me click here, mm, store one, just one store. So the store two, three, four, five, just didn't add it in in the, my drop down box because I have each one of the stores here in each one of the columns. It doesn't gonna work that way. I need to just put each one of the store in the same column, for example, one underneath another one, okay, that way. So to do it, let me just select it again and then right click cope for example and let's say i can click here for example right click and then i'm gonna paste it but i'm gonna transpose so instead of using a row i'm gonna use a column let me click here okay now we're gonna do it again right click in this box format control click in this upper arrow and then select all over again now arrow and then i'm gonna click here okay and our drop down box here is done now i can select everyone that i have here or i can select each one of the columns that i have store one store two three four five and so on now the next step is just right click again, format control, and then in the cell link, I'm gonna click here in this upper arrow and I'm gonna select here, let's say, any cell that you want. So for example, this one right here, low arrow, and okay. Now we got here a number, but what this number stands for? So let's check, let me change here, start five to start two, for example. Now I got here the number two, mm, interesting. Let me change again, store four. Now I got here the number four. This is because my store four is in the column number four in the range that I just select. So for example, my store four is in the column number four. So for example, store one is in the first column, store two is in the second one, store three is in the third one, and store four is in the fourth one. This is why I just got the number four right there. And because of that, we can do an automatically chart. So whenever you change the option in the drop down list, the number is going to automatically be updated. And the column reference is also going to be automatically updated. And to bring as result the specific column as the number that we have right there, we can use the index function. The index function is going to be responsible to bring back as result the column four, for example, or 
the column number three, the column number two, and so on, so on. So here in, let's say in the column K, for example, I'm gonna type it in equal sign index function, double click here, one, two. Now I can select my array. My array is gonna be my data set, but I don't need to select the first column, the date, but I'm gonna select and start with the store one, two, three, four, five, and everything underneath here. Okay, now we're gonna press comma. The row number, I'm not gonna use it. So comma again, but the column number, I'm gonna use it. And the column number in this example right here is the number four, but instead of just typing in the number four, within the function, instead, let me delete it, I'm gonna select the cell, because that way we can make the chart dynamic. Close parentheses and then press enter. So now, whenever I change here the store, this list, I select another option, as you guys can see, this column that I have here to the right, it's gonna be automatic update, and we can use it into our chart that we're gonna build. Now it's time to the third part, that is build the chart itself. So to build the chart, let me select here this first column, the date, select everyone right here, okay? Now we're gonna press and hold the control key and select all the second column right here. Okay, so look here that I just select this first column that I have and this column right here to the right, okay? So I select both the first one and this last one using the control key, okay? Now I can go here to the insert tab and select the chart that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use here for this example, the column chart. So the first option, okay? Here we got the chart. One thing that I, would, I can also do here is just select the, the title of the chart and read it off, delete. I can delete these right lines too, delete, and these numbers here is to the left, delete. Now one more step that we can do is click here in the inside area of the chart and just lower it a bit, like this for example, because you're gonna put the drop down box here, just above the chart. Now we can, let's say, double click here in the column, one, two, to open here this right panel, the gap width, I can change it to 100%, for example, enter, and I can click here in effects, shadow, select the first option, I can click here, fill and line, fill, gradient, fill, for example, and choose a yellow one, the second option right here. I can minimize it, click in borders, solid line, choose a black one, for example, and change the width to 0.5, for example. Now I can close it, and just the last step now, with the chart selected, I can go to chart design, and then here to the left, add chart element, because we just read it off the values that was to the left of the chart, we need to add in the values above the column, for example. So this is what you're gonna do, above, over the column, okay? So let me just click here in the data labels and then outside end. Okay, here we got. Now we can click here in the chart and just move up a little, like this, for example, and we're done. But wait a minute, where is my drop down list? I can't see it because my chart is just over, is overlapping the drop down box, okay? So this is why you can't see it. But to solve this problem, I can click in the chart and then I can go to format and then send backward. Okay, here we got, and we basically done. Let me just click in this list right here, but I'm gonna press and hold the control key, click, and just I'm gonna move it to here, for example, to this up left corner of the chart. And whenever I just move the chart, mm, the list does not move together. So let's make it better, let's make it move together. Let me just select the chart, and then I'm gonna press and hold the control key, select the list, and then I go to shape format, and I'm gonna group group everyone together. Now when I move the chart, my list is gonna move with the chart. Now it's working. And whenever I change here the option, so star one, star two, for example, two star three, as you guys can see, the chart is gonna be automatically updated for me. That way, we're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you can use this interactive and dynamic chart into your presentations, into your reports, if you have any questions, any suggestions to the next video, comment down below, let me know, and I see you tomorrow as everybody has a new video. I see you there.